Hi guys, Jay Smith here. Welcome to the Ask Golf Nut channel, and we are doing a classic Mizuno blade off, basically, between the new 923 Tour and the not old, but middle-aged, we'll call it, Pro 221. Blade, blade. Now, okay, this is not a blade. The 923 Tour is not a blade, cause, um, Oh, it is, but look at that. That's the smallest cavity I've ever seen, if that is not a blade. Tech-wise, this is the part of the video where I normally talk about the tech. Well, there's not much tech. So we have got the overriding thing between these two golf clubs is the copper underlay. 221's had it for a little while now, but obviously now with the new 923 Tour releasing, it's the first one with copper. So within reason, these two should feel identical. It'll be interesting to see when it comes to forgiveness at the end of the video, if there's any difference between these two. Again, the smallest cavity ever known, but it is a JPX iron. And of course, that is a pure Mizuno Pro blade. Really, that's it to do with that. Let's go get the simulator on. Let's go pick a hole where we have to go for water for fun, because obviously these are blades. And let's go see if we can control distance when it comes to that. So uh, yeah, let's go get the simulator and uh, see how these two get on. Okay, so simulator is now on. We're at hole 16 at Teton Pines. It's a par three at 161 yards. I'm gonna have to dial it a little bit back because it's about four yards too far. Although saying on this green with that water, I'd much rather be long than short. I'd rather pin that bunker in the back than short. Right, so we've done the tech or the very lack of between these two. There's basically no difference really between these. Apart from the JPX is more shaped like a JPX. So it'd be interesting to see with that smallest cavity in the world, whether there's any forgiveness difference between these two. So I'm just gonna do some shots now where we can compare the feel and looks and stuff like that. Um, and at the end, we'll do some forgiveness stuff because I'll say it, I've said it before and I'll say it again. When it comes to modern day blades, people have this perception, this myth uh, based understanding that you cannot play a blade unless you're a plus three handicap. Actually modern day blades, as time goes on, becoming more and more and more forgiving and I've done I don't know how many tests now where it surprises me just how forgiving a modern day blade is. So 221, it's got tiny thin top lines, it's got tiny thin soles, not very big blade lengths, not much offset. It is a lovely, lovely looking iron. And it's my favorite, I'll be, out, I'll be honest, between these two, why? Because it's chrome and I just like chrome. I'm an old school fan of seeing a blade and wanting the blade to look a little bit shiny. And you start off any good session with a thin. <laughs> Although saying that, when people say, loads aren't forgiving, nine mil low. Uh, efficiency 1.29, so we have dropped a little bit. Optimum for a blade, for me, at this loft is about 1.32. So we've lost 0 0.03. Uh, efficiency smash factor is just a measure of bang for your buck kind of thing. So that's nine mil low. Remember on a blade, there is no help. There is no springy face. There is no tungsten. There is no micro slot. There is no, oh, whatever other manufacturers and all manufacturers have their idea of tech. Now, okay, when it comes to a blade over a game improvement, I'm being honest. The biggest difference you're gonna have over a game improvement iron to a blade if you need help launching a golf ball, a blade won't have the help of initial launch that a game improvement iron will do. Lower further back CG, there you go. It will have a faster face, a game improvement iron, than a blade because you have super thin springy faces. Slab of metal. And then when it comes to forgiveness. Now, we'll be doing forgiveness things at the end of the video between both of these to showcase either how forgiving or not blades really are in the modern world. But the difference between a game improvement iron and a blade, if you're gonna hit a, a golf club, I'm talking off the scoring lines sometimes, then a game improvement iron will win. But you'll be surprised how bad you can hit a blade and get away with it. The feeling is gonna be terrible. You're gonna definitely know. These things will give you plenty of feedback to let you know you didn't do your job properly. <laughs> And I have done that a few times. Just that last one there, it was slightly thin. That was slightly toey. <laughs> there you go, overclose slightly toe and I need to slow down. That's my problem, I'm trying to dial it back. I one night I could swing fast, there we go. 12 mil toe, three mil low, overclosed. Um, I felt that one straight away. Now in a game improvement iron, depending on what game improvement iron, but especially super game improvement irons, you will not feel that. It will just be like, boom, decent shot. I was gone left, left a little bit. 
you won't know what's going on. This, I can near enough feel that I could call the amount of millimeters it is away from middle. Still tubby, pretty decent. I would say zero mil, zero mil high, but I would say that's nine, 10 toe. Ooh, see, that was done, as you could see, live, guessed it. Because that's what you get from these things. You get absolute feedback. Now, when you haven't got a expensive launch monitor telling you exactly what you're doing, having that level of understanding of where you're hitting it is important when it comes to practice. You can distinctly feel, I mean, it's, it's a forged blade and it feels lovely. <laughs> That's too Ah, uh, Tolo. <sighs> Very low on the face, that, and low toe. Five mil toe, nine low. Well, I'm clustering my strikes. Wrong, but I need to be clustering in a different spot. Right, uh, let's do one more, because I will try and hit a decent shot from a 2-2-1 uh, before I go to the 9-2-3 tour. Oh, don't go too far, don't go too far, don't go too far. I'm trying to hit it off the heel slightly. I've done exactly that, because I'm being slightly toe biased today. Decent strike, slightly, there you go. Whoever said blades aren't forgiving? Catch that one out, that's 15, uh, 15 millimeters away from middle. Heel bias, uh, 1.29 efficiency, 167, there you go. Right, um, let's go flick over to the 923 tour. Let's see if we can do a better job of hitting the middle. Although saying that, when it comes to feel, yeah, the feedback and the softness that you get from a 221 chromy chromy is just lovely. Flicked over now, same hole, different golf club. We have the tour in our hands. So visibly, this one's got more, more tech. It's got that cavity in the back, but then that's it. And then we are talking about exactly the same aesthetics. I mean, you're, you're talking the thin, thin top lines, lovely, nice, small soles. Blade lengths are small, blah, blah, blah. I will stick up on the screen just exactly how small they are in comparison because Mizuno's website has a wonderful little comparison tool where you can compare different golf clubs and top lines and offsets and all this lot. And then also if you've got a blended question, if you want to know if you wanted to blend a certain set, how could you do it with lofts and stuff, they've got a little tool in there, which is quite good. You can put them in there and it'll suggest what bent one week, two strong, whatever it would be. Have a little look if you want to. Right, so let's go give this one a hit because um, this is not my favorite because it's not shiny, it's not uh, chrome. So again, we've got the same um, copper underlay for both of them, so really they should feel no different at all. Slightly tugged it. Slightly tugged it. <laughs> Closed face, better strike, not too bad. Already starting off better than the 2 one um, But yeah, the feeling, so slightly overclosed, that's why I turn left. Um, the feeling, identical to 2 one I cannot, I mean, I, if I was blindfolded, okay, I could see because it's a different finish and stuff like that, but I can't tell a difference at all between these two. They're um, within reason, feeling-wise, audible, sound-wise, just identical. Just really is, just audibly exact. No difference at all. Decent strike again. Uh, good delivery, decent strike. I mean, it's just blade-like. Now, okay, when I hit this a load of times all over the face against 221, will there be a difference when it comes to a little wee cavity that we see in a, in a uh, tour over 221? We don't know, is it? All, all I do know is that the difference between game improvement irons and blades, that there's not that much difference. There is distinct reasoning why people choose for all game improvement. Yes, launch, forgiveness when it comes to extreme parts, springy faces to add in, like, because efficiency, 1.31. I max out 1.32. I don't get any more than 1.32 when it comes to efficiency on a blade of this loft. So 1.31, five mil low. It's still pretty good, but just feel-wise, it's just lovely from these two. Oh, that's not plumb on. That's a little bit wee toey. <laughs> that's that's toey, but look. I mean, that's an interesting one, look at that. That is 12 mil toe, two mil high, 1.28 efficiency, slightly dropped in efficiency, but hard. From that, 
that's half an inch off the middle. Good delivery, that's why it's gone straight, just mishit it, and it's kept its distance. People, game improvement irons are obviously there, game improvement, but they really, a lot of the time, game improvement irons should be renamed distance irons, not necessarily game improvement, because these just feel lovely. Just really do. You, all day long you could hit blades because they're more consistent than you think. You don't have to pepper the middle. Okay, if you're gonna pepper the middle, then you're gonna get, you're gonna get the good numbers, you're gonna get consistent numbers and stuff like that. But when it comes to it, again, you're looking at half an inch off the middle. Now these are not gonna be for 28 handicappers, 35 handicappers, they are not. But if you are even in your teens handicap and you hit a good ball, but your face to path is not very good or something like that, there's no reason why you can't, your hand-to-eye coordination is good enough that you can play blades. You just need to lessen so you can understand path relationships and stuff like that. Because I mean, the, the benefits that you get from a blade is that within reason you hit, uh, it's much more consistent. You don't get those flyers that you can do from a, a game improvement iron hot faced golf club. Uh, these things are just boring to hit. I mean, that's middle but low. Oh, there you go. Fast seat, fast swing. Um, middle but low. Exactly, you called it. Uh, 1.31 1 efficiency, slightly too fast. That's the reason why it's going too far. Uh, can I dial it back or am I going to ruin it by um, ruining my speed and synchronization? Let's see if we can dial it back a fraction. That's gone left. Yeah, it changed my synchronization a little bit. <laughs> slightly lowered the loft, slightly closed the face, got the speed back a little bit, but it's safe. It's safe, it's safe, it's not in the water. Um, right, differences between the 221 and the uh, 923 Tour. When it comes to feel, absolutely not. When it comes, there's no difference whatsoever. When it comes to look, apart from one's chrome and one's satin, really, the purist will have the 221 and then the one that looks like have a little bit more help will go for the 923 Tour. But there's no real difference in them at all. Feel, looks, performance, no, no difference whatsoever. Let's go see about the forgiveness side of those. So I'm gonna hit this, uh, or both of these, all over the face, heel, toe, high, low, all that kind of idea. Let's go see at what point blades start becoming a little bit not forgiving, and then see if there's any advantage to go either or between these two. So after hitting a load of shots with the 221 and the 923 Tour, it's time to bust some myths when it comes to blade use. And I've done the forgiveness side, so we'll do that one in a sec. But um, people need to understand that you don't need to be a scratch handicapper to play blades. They are far more forgiving than you actually think. And I need to do more content. I need to do some more videos on trying to sort this one out because people still have that belief that they can't use blades because they're, you have to hit them out of the middle every single time. Okay, right, so let's go into the uh, data that we've um, created when it comes to hitting loader shots. Um, 221, 7-iron first, 118.9 miles an hour ball speed, 20 degrees launch angle dead on, 6246, so 6250 when it comes to its total spin, uh, peaking up at 36 yards in the air and descending at 49.6. So that is like properly descending nice and steep, what you'd expect from a blade, spinning nice and well and all that lot, and going 165, which is within reason average carry what I would expect from a bladed 7 iron at 34 degrees. Um, if we go to the JPX 923 to see if there's any difference in that, 119.3 miles an hour rather than 118.9, so we've got 0.4 of a mile an hour gain. Um, launching 20 degrees bang on exactly the same, total spin is 62.34 rather than 62.46. Yep, 12 RPM in it. Um, it's going 36 yards in the air and 49.6 degrees descent angle. Exactly the same as the 221. Carrying 165. Exactly the same as 221. So there's absolutely no difference when it comes to the ball data between these two irons. I'm not surprised. Um, let's go look at the clubhead data to see if there's any difference there. So 221, um, clubhead speed 91 miles an hour. Efficiency 1.31, angle attack 4 degrees down, club path 0.4 from the inside, 0.5 close, so 
zero zero dynamics, um, 28.3 degrees aloft and two mil toe, four mil low. Standard deviation is on there because we are critiquing two golf clubs. We are kind of comparing them. So we do need to look at standard deviation and make sure that I am not massively mishitting one more than the other one to give a blurred understanding of which one's better. So it's on there for people to see. The odd mil here and there is not gonna be a problem. We will go into it. Um, 923 Tour, club head speed 90.5 miles an hour, efficiency 1.32. That's the difference between 0.01, and that could be even 0.005 because of rounding, yeah? Um, angle attack 3.7 down, 0.6 on the inside, 0.2 closed. Lie, don't look at it because these are media samples. Loft 28.5 rather than 28.3. 0.2 of a degree and three mil toe, three mil low rather than two mil toe, four mil low, six mil gross, six mil gross, and three mil and four mil rather than four mil and three mil. So stand deviation is mighty close between them as well. If you look at the graphical representation, which people can see, which sometimes they prefer it over than any other tabular data because they can understand it better. Um, you can see there that apart from one slight error weird left shot that I hit with a 221, they're both exactly the same. There is no difference between those whatsoever. Um, it is crazy how close they are when it comes to the performance between these two irons. Now, bear in mind, I am a human being. I try my best I can do to deliver to the same every single time. And on average, you're gonna hit enough shots, you are gonna get a good average of what the person is delivering. You capture one or two or three shots. You've seen when it comes to my normal test that I do on camera. I move around from time to time and I don't quite catch this, I don't quite catch that. That's a data set of three shots, four shots. That's why you need to hit 40 to get an understanding of just how well a golf club will work compared to something else. Just my body sometimes does not agree hitting 40 shots with each. <laughs> but, um, right, let's go into the forgiveness side of things because there's some interesting differences between these two and some potential understandings that people need to uh, have when it comes to blades against other golf clubs. So, 221 start with a low strike, uh, eight mil low, zero mil heel, 92 miles an hour, 0.7 on the inside, 1.4 closed, baby left one, which it did, five yards left. Um, it's gone um, one, 166 carry and 1.30 efficiency from an eight mil low. Yeah, so within reason, just slightly thin. Done well, 1.30 efficiency, 1.31, 1.32 is the maximum I would normally expect to get from a blade. So it's done very, very well. Uh, next one, slightly slower swing, 87.9. Remember guys, when it comes to golf club testing and stuff like that, I don't know down the camera who's gonna be watching this and what speed they are. So I can't do a video with 17 different miles an hour of swing speeds to show exactly how one will work. So what I try and do is I try and mix around as best I can, do different swing speeds to see if, well, again, I don't know who's gonna be watching it, so I try my best to try and capture as much as I can do for everybody. Um, so 88 miles an hour, uh, 87.9. Uh, one degree from the inside, 0.4 close, which is perfect uh, draw delivery, and one mil high, 11 mil toe, so 12 mil off, which is basically half an inch. It's dropped to 1.28 um, from 1.31, so it's dropped 0.03 uh, of an efficiency. Uh, it's absolutely fine. Now, the reason why it's only carrying 1.56 is because I'm swinging slower, but the efficiency is the one that matters. Going back to a toe shot, but now let's go see extreme. 92 miles an hour, uh, or 92.1, 1.3 from the inside, 2.3 close, so baby overdraw. Three mil high, 25 mil toe, 25 mil toe. And yes, efficiency is now 1.18. So it has dropped a boatload now because we're hitting it there. So uh, when it comes to a blade, if you're gonna hit a nominal miss, doesn't matter if it's half inch heel, half inch toe, a little bit low on the face and stuff like that. If you're gonna move around a little bit, you're absolutely fine. If you're gonna move 25 mil, yeah, then uh, game improvement iron is definitely gonna be the one. Now remember 25 mil, these are small heads. So that was basically on the chrome bit, not on the scoring lines. It was that bad, but it just goes to show that a blade still will help if it's 14 mil off the toe and stuff like that, but it won't help if you're gonna go 25 plus. Yeah, bear that one in mind. So, um, 923 Tour, let's go to the low strike. Uh, eight mil low, one mil heel, so within one mil, exactly the same as um, 221. 90.7 miles an hour club head speed, 0.8 from across, 1.3 open, baby, baby, little fade dynamics, and efficiencies drop by 0 0.02. That is it, from a slightly thin shot. Absolutely fine. Now, these don't feel very nice, I must admit. Hitting them slightly low on the face, you do know. And the great thing with blades, you get absolute 
wonderful amounts of feedback to know exactly where you're hitting on the face and uh, without any kind of penalty whatsoever. That's a, uh, yeah. Um, next one, a 923 Tor 7 iron. We have, um, again, a half inch miss off the toe. 91 miles an hour clubhead speed, 0.0 path, 0.2 open. So within reason, nearly perfect. One mil high, 12 toe, so 13 mil. So within one mil, exactly the same as the 221 when it comes to toe strike. And it's lost again, 0.03, exactly the same as 221. It's forgiving, it's fine, it's 163, it's hardly lost two yards. It's done amazingly well. These are blades, remember. Hit half inch off the middle, absolutely fine. Right, let's go to the extreme. So when it comes to 923 Tour again, um, 25 mil, exactly the same as 221. Uh, 90.7 miles an hour, 0.8 from the inside, 0.7 close. So basically baby left, but perfect draw dynamics, little tiny one, uh, but 25 mil toe. And yes, it has lost efficiency. Now, the one, one good thing is it hasn't gone to 1.18 like the 221, it's gone to 1.23. Still a big drop, still lost 10 yards of carry, 25 mil toe, um, not surprised, but it hasn't lost as much as the um, 221. So you could argue, one could argue that actually, do you know what? Because of the construction of the JPX tour over the 221, that means potentially a bit more perimeter weight in that the 923 tour is fractionally more forgiving of extreme toe shots than the 221. But the biggest message here, if you're gonna regularly hit golf clubs from 25 mil plus toe off the middle, or anywhere off the middle like that distance, you need lessons not looking at golf equipment to try and fix that problem because no golf club will, okay, a game improvement iron, a full on game improvement iron, a G430 or anything else like that, big old golf clubs that are designed to help, they will help, absolutely they will. However, I, I wouldn't be searching for equipment if you're regularly hitting 25 mil or so off the face. So, um, when it comes to normal shots, it doesn't matter if 221, 923 tall, they're blades, but they'll help on normal shots, middle shots, absolutely. Half inch, 14 mil off the toe, something like that, absolutely fine with, with blades, no problem whatsoever. More people could use blades. If you are gonna miss the middle by massively huge amounts, then by all means, have a lesson. Um, if you, again, I wouldn't worry about the, the odd one. I wouldn't buy a game improvement iron on the basis that I'm trying to protect one out of 100 shots. Um, because with a game improvement with a hotter face, etc., there is a potential for difference in consistency front to back, etc., because of that higher, um, faster face. But the main difference I would go for um, game improvement iron over a, a blade or bladed option like this would be for basically two reasons. One, you need the help in initial launch because of lower further back CG and a blade over a game improvement iron, the game improvement iron will launch the golf ball high because of lower further back CG straight away. And then when it comes to speed of face, a game improvement iron with a really springy face will give you more efficiency straight away, bang for your buck. It will just get more ball speed for your clubhead speed. If you want extra distance, that's the way to go. Um, when it comes to its helpfulness though, I wouldn't buy a game improvement iron over a blade on the basis of 25 mil plus toe shots or etc. like that. It's just get a lesson, really, just, yeah. Wow. Hope you liked the video. If you did, big old thumbs up. Go on YouTube, likes it, so do I. Down there, there's a little red button, a subscribe button. If you can click that one, that'd be great because it's free and it's great for the channel and it helps out no end. And next to that is a bell icon. That's a notification bell that will um, let you know next time. As long as you click it, that will let, let you know next time. I upload another video, which won't be long now. And uh, hope you're well, and we'll see you again soon.